Hello everyone, my name is Anush Naik and welcome back to another FTC 5773 Ink and Metal Crash Course video. Today we're going to be talking about what Roadrunner is and implementing it in Android Studio for you to use for your robot. Now what is Roadrunner? As explained here, Roadrunner is a motion planning library that you can implement using your Android Studio for your robot. You can actually use this to create certain trajectories or paths or movements which your robot can follow and move to certain areas. Roadrunner sort of thinks of the field as a coordinate system with x and y coordinates and you can basically tell your robot to move from this set of coordinates to another and you also have the option of telling it to move in a variety of ways called trajectories which I'll get to and you also have the option of telling it to move at a certain angle. So um, yeah, that's what Roadrunner is. And I'm gonna be using Roadrunner today with Android Studio and um, a bit about the prerequisites about this video. You um, should have your robot set up with Android Studio and Rev Expansion Hub or Rev Control Hub or whatever you have. And you should also have some understanding of the language of Java because that's what Roadrunner is programmed with and that's what you're gonna have to use to implement Roadrunner in your robot. Um, so with Roadrunner, you can actually use odometers, or also known as dead wheels, or encoders. You just have to pick between the two, which I'm also going to get to later. So first, we're going to install the Roadrunner project. So go to learnroadrunner.com, and you're going to go to the method one, downloading the quick start. So click on that, and you'll see a GitHub link. Go ahead and click on that, and this will take you to the project of um, Roadrunner. So um, this is the project. Now just click on the drop down menu and you're gonna click on download zip. So this is just gonna download the project and we're gonna actually open this with Android Studio so make sure that you have that installed on your computer. So I'm um, just waiting for it to download. Um, basically this project has the regular ultimate cold um, SDK stuff as well as the Roadrunner SDK integrated within it. So go ahead and open this, and here it is. Okay, it's taking a while. Okay, here we are. So um, I downloaded it before, but it's the same thing. So um, it's probably in your downloads folder, so you're gonna wanna fire up your Android Studio. Um, just open an existing project. Uh, it's taking a while. Then go to wherever you downloaded it. Oops. Sorry about that. Um, and then just find the folder and open it up. So it's gonna take a while for your project to open up. Just make sure, make sure that you wait for your Gradle sync to be complete and we'll look into the project. Okay, so now that your Gradle sync is complete, which should take a few minutes at least, and your indexing is all complete, you should see something that looks similar to this. Um, so you're gonna have just the readme and then these two folders, which looks pretty similar to a regular um, FTC project. So you're gonna go to team code, then Java, then into the org and then into drive and OP mode. And you'll see all of these files. Now most of these files in the OP mode are actually required for you in the tuning process of Roadrunner, which I'll get to. Um, only one of these files you should not be seeing, which is testing trajectories, which I need to show you something later in this video. So um, now let's get into the tuning process of Roadrunner. So um, let me navigate here. Yeah, cool. So um, why do we need to tune? Well, you need to tune for a few reasons, actually. Every robot has different weights and it has different proportions of weights on different parts of the robot. And if you have different weights on different sides of the robot, that actually affects its accuracy at running these trajectories properly. So you wanna make sure that you tune the robot with Roadrunner um, in its tuning process. Also, this is mainly to get the drivetrain behavior set up to be really accurate as well, and just make sure that all your trajectories are very smooth and accurate. And also note, whenever you add a lot of weight to your robot, it would be a great idea to retune your robot because there could be several inaccuracies if you don't. So um, 
over here um, in the high level overview, there's a little diagram. This is what the tuning process looks like. So you first have the drive constants. You're gonna have to tune these drive constants. And note, this is just an overview. All the um, all these steps in depth are underneath, which you should go over. Um, so first is drive constants. Um, in your project, there is a drive constants folder. Um, right here so if you open that um, which over here it just has a bunch of variables and these are actually measurements for your robot and if you'll see over here you're actually going to be need to measure like ticks per rev max rpm um kv k k static all of these things you're going to have to measure for drive constants and put in your drive constant file so next is um in the diagram here here it is Next is um, dead wheels. So like I mentioned before, you can use Roadrunner with odometer slash dead wheels or encoders. So only do this step if you are using dead wheels or odometers. And that would be located right here. Um, you might have different um, amount of wheels or odometers. So just make sure to pick the correct one. Um, after you do dead wheels, um, if you have them, then you're going to do localization tests. So you might notice there are two localization tests. That is because the first one is actually meant for people who are using odometers or dead wheels. That's why it has the asterisk key. So that's going to be the localization test number one. Or where is it? Um, here. Oh, sorry, it's just explained uh, right here. Yeah, localization test one. Um, that's basically just to let your robot know where it is on the field, which is pivotal in Roadrunner's um, coordinate system. Um, then you're going to go to this next step. You're gonna actually use drive velocity PID tuner if you're using encoders. And if you are not using encoders, the drive feed forward tuner. Now, um, if you are using both, then you're going to tune the velocity PID, which is this one. Um, for both of, um, for both of these, the main goal is actually to, um, uh, reach and maintain a certain velocity for your robot, which is also really important to the accuracy in running Roadrunner. Um, next would be your straight test where you just check for, um, discrepancies in moving forward and backwards. Then would be your track with tuner. There's actually an OP mode, which you can run to, um, calculate this for you, uh, track with Tune it right here. This is the one. Um, then you have your turn test, which makes sure that your turning is accurate. Um, then you have your second localization test. You only do this one if you didn't do the first one and you have encoders, and that's described um, down here, localization test two. Um, then you have the follower PID tuner. Um, this is for both again. And basically this just tunes your PID values. And then you have to end off with your spline test, which is just sort of curvy movement to check the accuracy for that. Make sure that you follow this guide in order when you're tuning your robot. And it's really important that you do each step one at a time. So um, that's basically the tuning process. And now um, I'm going to be getting into um, a few of these trajectories. So first I want to go over a few terms. Um, just skip these. Um, oh, sorry, this is actually important. We will go over here. So with your trajectories, you actually have two things, trajectories and paths. Trajectories are basically just one-way movements and paths are a compilation of these trajectories. Um, next thing is a vector and a pose. So the vector 2D is actually just like coordinates, um, coordinates in your coordinate system, just the X and Y. Whereas the pose 2D has the coordinates as well as a heading or angle, which is by default in radians. So if you're using degrees, you want to make sure that you convert it into radians. Um, and yeah, so now I'm going to be getting into creating trajectories. So I already added this one file, which should not be in your project called testing trajectories to show you. So my team and I were working on this just for the wobble goal and the ultimate goal season. Um, yeah, so 
Um, we were, um, you have to import a few things, the post 2D, vector 2D, trajectory. Um, we're doing linear OP mode um, because this is an IntelliOp. And then um, we're um, importing IntelliOp. And we're making sure this is IntelliOp because we're using this in autonomous. And we are also importing sample mechanism drive. <coughs> All basic stuff right there. Um, now in your run OP mode, this is where you actually create your trajectories. So um, also this is pretty standard, just getting your drive set up. Um, now you have a trajectory. So this is basically how you create a trajectory. You just have the first word keyword trajectory, the name of your trajectory, and then you just set that equal to um, the object of your sample mechanism drive you created here. And then you, so in this case, drive, and then drive dot trajectory builder and then new pose 2D. You only do new pose 2D here because this is actually your first one. Um, yeah. And then in this case, we're using a spline to movement. So all the trajectories are listed here and we're gonna be going over them in the next video, but um, I'm just gonna be showing you how you would build a trajectory. So this is just a spline to movement and it requires a vector 2D and um, also an ending tangent. Um, so this is our vector 2D and then this is our ending tangent of 45 degrees. And remember to convert that to radians. And then you do dot build and semicolon and this is how you build one trajectory. So after you build it, it's not necessarily run here. Um, I'll show you where you implement it down. But for your second trajectory, you need to make sure that you actually use the same coordinates where you ever left off in the last trajectory and put them here at the top so that you're actually starting at the position where you ended your last trajectory. And that's really important because otherwise it will like think that it's somewhere else on the field and it'll just move and several things will go wrong. So make sure that this always matches your previous trajectory. And here we're just doing a line to linear heading. Again, we'll go over these later. And this one requires a pose 2D. So we are giving it um, all three arguments. And then we just have a bunch of other trajectories. <clears throat> and then we actually, this is where we run our trajectories. You have to do drive, which is the ob object that we created um, above, and then dot follow trajectory, and then the name of your trajectory. And you can follow it in whatever path, just make sure that the coordinates are matching. And yeah, this would just follow all of these trajectories in this order. So yeah, that's a basic overview to Roadrunner and implementing it for um, Android Studio. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give a like. And if you like our other videos, please subscribe to our channel and we will have much more content to come. And stay tuned for our next video, which we will talk about um, the virtual robot and more about Roadrunner trajectories.